Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Ancestral Owl Messages and this is going to be a shadow work read for the collective sign of Leo. There's no timestamp on the message. Whenever you're led to it is when you need it to hear it. So before we get into the details of the read, let's pray. Great Creator, Father God, Divine Mother, Mother Mary, Angels, Ancestors, and Spirit Guides, I just pray and ask for wisdom and clarity. Any um, messages needing to come through for the collective sign of Leo for this, their shadow work read. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. One more shuffle. This is a Sacred Traveler Oracle card deck. I'm going to pull two cards. And then as I'm shuffling... Crotera deck, I'll explain about the read. So, first card, in the flow, everything is smooth sailing. Then you got, move the camera a little bit. One off the bottom. Passion and pleasure, savor your life. I'm excited to set out this read for you because it looks like you got happiness here. That's good. So, the way the shadow work read is set up, it was originally, I originally called it the mess read. Mental, emotional, spiritual, and relationship with self. Um, but it's basically a healing read of really identifying the shadows in your life and bringing healing to those areas. So, yeah, four sectors, and the four sectors are divided with into four cards and I'll explain after I lay them all out but I'll tell you the cards as they go on the table and then I'll go into deeper depth there will be an extended to this read if you're interested in the extended the link is down in the description box below and it's a link to my patreon page and it's only one tier um, and you get access to all the extendeds plus there's a few articles on there about twin flame connection and it's five dollars a month so for five dollars a month you get access to all the extended so it's not five dollars per extended it's access for the month whatever extended reads are placed on there what has been placed on the page as well as the articles so all right one more shuffle and then i'll lay out the cards Alright, mental tower. First card out. Six of Wands. Queen of Wands. Seven of Cups. Emotional. Nine of Pentacles. Hierophant. Aries got the Hierophant in that same position. The Emperor and Chariot. Spiritual, Page of Swords, Six of Pentacles, Ace of Swords, Page of Cups. Leo, what is going on here? Relationship with Self, Four of Swords, Lovers, The Devil, and Nine of Swords. Okay, Leo, here we go. This is the face that the world sees. We all have the image that we present to the world. This is at the heart of the matter. This is hidden in shadow. Shadows appear throughout the reed, but this is what's hidden. It's almost like it's behind the veil. It's behind this shadow that you may be dealing with. And I see the devil card here in the tower. So there is a few shadows that need to be healed. But you are healing. Okay, so the face that the world sees. And as I pull them, I'll explain how they see this. Mentally, the tower. The tower isn't always a bad thing. The tower is just removing blockages from our lives. Now, the reason that the world sees this and what... What is meant by the term the world when it comes to a, a read is that your social circle sees this. The way they see um, 
this tower moment that has happened mentally is that you're probably talking about it or it comes up in conversation. This is what they see. And I feel like this is a relationship that ended. There was a, um, a split here. There was some kind of disconnect between you and another person. Now, at the heart of the matter, though, which kind of is interesting, because at the heart of the matter is Six of Wands and Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands is fiery, fiery energy, fiery, passionate energy of basically it's Sagittarian energy and it's, and we can embody the different energies of different Zodiac we can. But what this placement means here is that you're celebrating because the person that you cut off, you stood up to them. Sagittarius, each of the fire signs have like this grace surrounding them because it's their um, passion comes out in their words, in the way they communicate. So this is like, this was a long time coming. So you're celebrating the end of this relationship. This person that you just kind of cut out was not good for you. Really weren't. But the world is seeing this. Like your social circle is seeing that, oh, this ended. They may be misinterpreting the fact that you're talking about it. And the reason you're talking about it is because you feel like you've gained victory and finally put a stop to someone in your life that was using you, manipulating you, stuff like that. Now, these four up here, which is what the world sees, it could also, it, it, there is in some reads where it comes across like it's misinterpreted because the world sees one face or they, your social circle may misinterpret what you're saying to them or what they're seeing. They may think that you're at the end of your rope and you're um, secretly applauding yourself. And this is how this has come across because you're patting yourself on the back for this. And that's good. You've set up healthy boundaries to this person. You've cut them out. What's hidden from view though, seven of cups. Um, this is in shadow. This is confusion. This is something that you need to face. Seven of Cups is so many choices, so many options that it confuses you. You may need to face this and let it talk to you. The way that you alchemize shadows to light is that you let them speak because they're essentially a part of you. And that's where you get to, to the healing. I feel like there's confusion surrounding this because even though you're applauding yourself for standing up to them, and really being in this Queen of Wands energy where you set them straight and you told it like it was, I still feel like, and see that's that's what may be that the world is your social circle is hearing, is that I feel like the shadow that you need to face is that you're doubting yourself. It's almost like you're sitting down and saying, maybe I could have handled this in a different way. Maybe I didn't have to be really harsh about it. Maybe they were getting ready to come around. What if I told them off and sent them packing before they came around? Before they figured out that they were acting this way. So I think there's confusion here. And I really feel like that. I feel like that's the first shadow that you're going to have to be facing here. To heal. Let it speak and explain to you. Um, the way that you, and I'll explain this too. The way you get, you heal regret is that you let... You go through the different scenarios of acting differently if you regret acting a certain way. But you let, in the different scenarios, you let the movie play out until the end. The movie in your head of the different scenarios. Then you judge for yourself which scenario would have brought you to the person that you are now. Would have been better of any other choices, then you take that as wisdom and you carry on and you make better choices later on. But in the scenarios too, you may find that the person that you are now is much stronger than if you had taken other options. So you can heal regret. That's how you heal regret. 
but I feel like you're confused about this. Like, maybe I should have given them another minute. Maybe I should have given them another chance. And it's kind of lingering. That's a shadow that needs to be faced. Emotionally, because any hit that we get emotionally, it's a spiritual hit because it will resonate in our energetic space, but we mentally go over it. Emotionally, though, Nine of Pentacles, this is what the world sees, is that you're handling it well. Because I feel like when it comes to mentally, you may have let slip sometimes of, did I do the right thing? That may have been a question to certain members of your social circle. And so this confusion has kind of slipped out. Because emotionally, they're looking at you like, the Nine of Pentacles job well done. They're looking at you like, wow, they are handling this well. The heart of the matter, Hierophant showed up in the same spot for Aries. I cannot get over that. You have, and the, it's, I feel like it was the same two cards for Aries too. Was it the same two? Or no, it wasn't. You have the Hierophant and the Emperor. The Hierophant is catalyst of change. This is something that has happened that really provoked a change in this. This could also be going to um, someone for advice who gave you the advice to change the entire situation. And the advice I feel like they gave you was to stand in this emperor energy. Don't take no shit from them no more. And I feel like that's what they said. No, no, no. This is manipulative. Don't do this. Don't play this game anymore. Let them go. What's in the shadow is this quick movement. Chariot. And I, I feel like with this there... I feel like that's another shadow that needs to really be faced. Because sometimes you have gifts on the other side of shadow. And sometimes they show up here like that too. But I feel like with the chariot, um, you don't want to talk about this anymore. Like you're talking about it, but at the same time, it's like you don't want to... You want to run as far away from this as possible. But there's still a level of healing here. This is almost like a moving on too quickly. That may be, and like I said, that may be another shadow to face of why are you trying to move on so quickly? You may need a minute to process everything that's happened. Because if you move on too quickly and you don't heal, what is the saying? Um, you'll end up bleeding on those that didn't cut you. So that may need to be another one that you let talk to you. Spiritually, what the world sees is Page of Swords. Now this is... That little messenger keeps popping up. Just keeps popping up. I feel like here, with this little messenger, swords are thoughts and actions. But pages are immature energy. That's like a childlike messenger type of thing. Now, spiritually, the way that it comes across is that it's in your energetic space. And it's, it, your aura, like it'll come off like that. But it also comes off in your dealings with other people. How you connect with other people. It just it does come across like that too. And I feel like too. That this may be a misinterpretation here. That the world is. Kind of coming up with. A, your social circle is coming up with their own conclusions. That it isn't necessarily right. Because I feel like now. It may be you talking about this. And you going into details of what you said, and the fact that there's a little confusion behind it. They may not interpret this as someone that's empathic, that wants to give people more chances than what some of them afford, like what some of them really should have. So they're misinterpreting this whole scenario as... Um, you act in childish, not even childish, but not exactly taking the higher road in this. When I feel like the only reason you're really talking about it is because you're trying to get to the heart of the confusion instead of recognizing it as confusion, 
sending it down and letting it talk to you um, and dealing with it. But this is just a misinterpretation. This is other people seeing you in one way where it's not the truth. Because at the heart of the matter, you have Six of Pentacles and Ace of Swords. Six of Pentacles is that community card. This is staying connected to your social circle. Ace of Swords is truth and clarity. This could also be um, spiritually a new circle, social circle opening up, people that are vibrating on the same level with you now. Since um, And see, the, the reason that new people would come in when you cut someone off is usually because they're it's like an energy vampire that you cut off or it's a very narcissistic person and narcissistic personalities can be very energetically vampire-ish because what they do is they take all of your attention to themselves so then you lose that social circle and then you can't like it stunts your spiritual growth and as you spiritually grow you're new people are supposed to vibrate to you they're supposed to flow into your life while others may outgrow you or you may outgrow them so what's happening here spiritually even though the world is kind of doing this misjudgment thing like this is completely off with what i see um i feel like you have a new social circle that basically the floodgates are open because you've removed this person from your life that was really energetically taken from you what's hidden though the shadow is this that's another shadow you have to deal with page of cups now i'm going to explain the shadow and don't shoot the messenger i'll explain it this way Sometimes when it comes to love, when it's part of the bargaining process, like you go through it when you're grieving someone, but when you're grieving the loss of a relationship, you kind of hit that same stage too. And it's, I would rather have this tiny little cup, this tiny little messed up message that they sent me than to have no message at all. I would rather deal with the manipulation than deal with the silence. I would rather deal with the game playing than deal with nothing at all. This is also another shadow that needs to really speak. Because you're bargaining and you're settling. Like this is second guessing yourself but at the same time it's like I would rather deal with it than be alone. If you can't, and like I said, don't shoot the messenger. If you can't be silent with yourself, silent with your own thoughts, then there is a great deal of healing that needs to happen. If you can't be silent with your own thoughts, there's wounds that have been screaming to you or screaming at you for years. And that's why you really can't be like silent to where because each of your shadows want to speak to you these wounds want to cry they want to heal they've been ignored like it's that type of thing and i'm not saying that this is your energy i'm just saying that instead of bargaining or instead of settling um, instead of saying i would rather them i would rather deal with this than not deal with anyone at all because you have a fear of being alone. You need to let that speak to you too. Your relationship with self. What the world sees is four of swords. Healing. Resting and retreating. I'm surprised that the hermit card didn't show up. Because this, this gives the air of your social circle sees you hiding. Like sees you pulling back from them. Even though you have this connection here. New social circle coming in. They kind of see you limiting yourself in that connection. This could be a misinterpretation too. The world does that. But the reason that it's included in the read is because it will give you an insight of how people are interacting with you. Because that's also another degree of healing. 
Now, at the heart of the matter with relationship with self is two cards that are opposite energies. And I kind of get it. I do. You have the lover's card and the devil card. This is the same energy as this one was. I would rather have the little games, or I would rather have the, the games, manipulative games. Oh, excuse me. Than nothing at all. That's that devil card. That's the devil energy. That is that shadow. And your relationship with self, you keep, like, it goes back and forth. Like, I would rather have this in this connection than not have a connection at all. So there's a need here for you to nurture yourself, for you to take time out and really love on yourself, allow the shadows to speak to you, alchemize them into light, heal the wounds that are there. You have to heal them. You have to let them scream and cry to you. You have to face them. You have to name them in order to heal them because this is, it's almost like you have now this distorted image of love and even a distorted image of yourself and a distorted image of how others should love you. What's hidden in the shadows? Another, like this is the same shadow and it keeps like these three areas right here, they keep like repeating, just keeps like, I don't know, it keeps like, like there's three different levels to this. What's hidden in the shadow for your relationship with self is nine of swords. Because that's another thing that you're neglecting. I don't think you're taking the time to really mourn this. To really sit down and cry about and just mourn. Nine of Swords is that sleepless nights, obsessive, this is grieving. And I don't think you're allowing yourself to do that. Listen, if someone's going to treat you like you're only worth or you're only valuable if they need something and then you cut them out, you still, it's still a relationship. Like there was still a connection there trying to see the time there was still a connection there <clears throat> it hurt you like it did so you have to allow the grieving process to happen you have to allow yourself to grieve now i like these two and i must tell you how the sacred traveler oracle cards fit into this in the flow everything is smooth sailing because the only way from here is up like there, you will reach the healing. You will take time. You know, it's like you're not, this person is, it's not going to be one of those things where because you cut the person out, I feel like you have, this person is not going to keep taking on your energy because just, just think about what they would have, what would have transpired if they were still in your life. They would have taken more. They would have broken you even further. There would have been more cracks. There would have been. So from here on, you can do this. Like there's not any of like the redirection going here, going there. And then the other one is passion and pleasure, savor your life. During healing and during mourning and grieving, relationships ending, you know what the secret to getting through those is? Laugh. It is. Find something you enjoy to do. Laugh. Spend time with your social circle. Watch comedy movies. Watch, um, share jokes with your friends. Like, humor is what will get you through this insanely, like, deep wounds as they heal. Laugh. I know it seems opposite from mourning and crying, but actually laughter is this healing oil that's applied to wounds spiritual wounds emotional wounds mental wounds like laughter is a freeing it gives hope there's joy there's faith with it it's if you sit down 
and write down the properties of light, spiritual light, the properties of spiritual light. Joy is among them. Laughter, like happiness, it's among them. As you heal and you're alchemizing these shadows and, you know, alchemizing them to light, that is what will alchemize them to, is laugh. Laugh at goofy little things during the day. Remember goofy things that you've done. Even remember the goofy good times that you've had with that person and laugh. Because laughter will actually heal more than anything else. Like it really will. So let me, I'm going to pull a vintage wisdom oracle card for each of the sectors. If you're interested in the extended read, um, the extended read, there's an additional oracle card that's pulled, and then there's an entirely different spread where it gives you insight of um, your spiritual team that's helping you, different um, healing that's happening. Like it's, it's very, it goes in depth. Okay. So for mental thought. I love it when the cards talk to each other. Like, the, they have been. Especially with this ring. Um, watch. Like, okay. Your thoughts bring healing too. So, I mean, pat yourself on the back for this. At the same time, admit to yourself. And really change the pattern of your thoughts. To where it's not... Um, Maybe I should have done something different. You know, stop second-guessing yourself. Change that pattern in your thought life. Emotionally. Truth. Well then. Stand in your truth. Stand in the truth that you have... You're doing a good job. I mean... Be truthful and honest of how you feel. That you're broken hearted that this connection ended. That it couldn't have gone better. That it didn't go better. That you had to remove yourself from this person. Absolutely. Be honest with that. You know what happens? That's your truth. You're embracing your truth. You're standing in your authenticity. You're also facing these shadows. And you're turning them into light. Because another... Just checking the time, it gets weighted out by the cards. Another spiritual element of truth, or another spiritual element of light is truth. No matter how ugly or how beautiful it is. For the spiritual sector, it's wisdom. You see that owl there? Wisdom is applied knowledge. This is... A, Learning the lessons from this connection and applying them to your life and future steps. So for relationship with self, discernment, I love it. I love it. There may be a fear too. It may be like an underlying fear that you're afraid to jump into anything because you're afraid that the next connection will be like this. And it's not going to be. Because what ends up happening is that when you walk away from someone like this, when you walk away and you set up healthy boundaries from them, this is the gift you get in return. Because you're like, oh, if you're paying attention to the gift, some people don't accept the gift. And they just keep walking back into like the same situation over and over again. If you accept the gift, that's the gift you receive is discernment. That way... If someone else with the same characteristics starts coming towards you or floats into your life, then you're like, oh, I know you. Go that way. You're not doing that again. So, for the collective sign of Leo, this is your the part one to your shadow work read. If you're interested in the extended, the link is down below and it leads you to Patreon. So, love and light.